There aren't many sports as glamorous as offshore. Formula One racing comes close, but then one must remember that some of these machines have the equivalent of up to four F1 power plants capable of pushing these two-ton, 40-foot monsters along at up to 130 mile an hour. It's a sport in which you can rub shoulders with the rich, the famous, and if you really want to, the oily mechanics. Not all crew have an oily background. Indeed, away from offshore racing, some drivers lead a very different life. One such person is Andreas Ugland. When out of his racing uniform, he's a director of one of the world's biggest shipping companies. Along with his family, he's responsible for running the Ugland fleet of over 36 ships. You can find their vessels in ports all around the world. Pictured here in T-Sport, in the cold northeast of England, Ugland ships can be seen here at Journey's End from as far away as Japan. Particularly impressive are the Hugh Ugland Auto Liners. With an annual lifting of more than half a million motor vehicles on worldwide ocean routes, Hugh Ugland Auto Liners is today among the world's leading car carrier operators. The Norwegian parent company, Andreas Ugland & Sons, is one of Norway's leading ship-owning companies, with tankers, bulk carriers, large car carriers, and offshore oil marine vessels amongst its fleet. Far away from the cold northeast, and in total contrast to his working life, Andreas can be found in a very different port, warm and sunny Saint-Tropez. A quite delightful climate for May saw the first race of the European heats of this year's racing calendar. The turnout for Class 1 was especially good with some 33 boats all sporting radical hull design changes that have taken place during the winter. Following the tragic death of Stefano Casaraghi in Monaco last October, the governing body of offshore powerboat racing, the UIM, ruled that any catamaran would have to race with seated crews, canopies, five-point harnesses and oxygen where necessary. The weather conditions for racing were perfect, ideal for testing out new hulls, ideas and sheer bottle. After battling a four-lap, 135-mile race, Angelo spelter in fresh and clean settles for second position. But family blood was to stay in front when his own son, Damiano Spelter in GP Pedrini, 
was to hold the lead and take first place from his own father, setting a trend due to continue in this year's racing calendar. The Cow's Classic in many ways is a true offshore race. There are no laps. Quite simply, it's the fastest boat from Cowes and the Isle of Wight to Torquay and back that takes the chequered flag. With a distance of over 200 miles and an approximate race time of three hours, that's some going. Powerboat enthusiasts regularly flock to the Solent, with its twin tides, its vicious and varied currents, its fickle winds and its largely protected waters, it offers the most taxing boating conditions of the world. Most class one drivers opt for catamaran type holes, and generally speaking, in flat conditions, they are faster. Monoholes, on the other hand, prefer rougher conditions. One such boat is Fiat Uno. For us, it's without doubt. I mean, it's, it's better in the rough. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, since it's a V-hull compared to the catamarans, the rougher the better for us in, in reality. At the same time, as we have a pretty quick boat for being a V-hull, it's most probably the most, well, it is the, the quickest V-hull ever made. It's a Fabio Buzzi design. It goes really back, I mean, the, the, uh, the first boat that had any similarity to this was the old uh, Ganja de Ganja, which you might remember. Uh, she was, uh, of course, most famous, I think, in the 88-89 season, when she won the world championship. It's basically, I mean, the same kind of hull that this boat is based on now. Uh, we, we have cannabis on our boat and you know, we, first of all, we feel very much more relaxed inside. Secondly, for, for of course, uh, for security purposes, it's, uh, I think, essential now. At the speeds we are running, you must have it. Well, I've been racing now for 18 years, more or less on and off, and uh, the last eight years now with uh, Jan Hillestad. <laughs>
So the battle between father and son goes on and on and on. Angina Spelter takes the season, but in a fatherly gesture lets his son take the final race. For a week, the echoing roar of turbocharged engines resounded amongst the hills behind beautiful Trieste. As the sound finally faded, leaving the city to resume its more sedate way of life, so the 1991 offshore racing season ended too. Doubtless there will be time to reflect, a quiet lull in which to enjoy the laurels of victory, or perhaps to consider the lack of them. But even before the majestic roar of engines died, plans were being laid for 1992. A new beginning, a change of fortunes, a fresh charge of optimism, a new season for the fastest raceboat in the world. <laughs>